Okay guys, before you leave us, I know we've had a lot of talk about chest tubes. Really, it's the equipment to be familiar with that's gonna help you out a lot. So let's take a look at that. So again, during the presentation, we talked about wet suction and dry suction, and that's what I've got here. So if you look over here, if you remember, with the dial, think dry suction. So I've got my dry suction canister here. I've also got my wet suction canister here. So again, wet versus dry. So let's take a look at these and compare. So when we're talking about similarities. Let's take a look at those first. So as you notice on the dry, also on the wet, they both have those calibrated and those marked measured collection chambers. This is where you're gonna see any drainage, any fluid, and especially blood. Now this is really important to note each shift. We'll also be able to mark this to see how fast that drainage is accruing. Okay, so pretty easy, right? There's our collection chambers. Next, another similarity is our air leak monitor. If you remember, this is key to pay attention to. So if there's bubbling in this, we need to note that. So let's look at the equipment. So take a look here on our dry. Also, let's take a look on our wet here. So you notice these look exactly the same. The main thing when you're setting up the equipment, you have to make sure is that that two dotted line and make sure the air leak monitor is filled towards that. And again, if you remember, we go from this side to the five, the higher the number, the worse the air leak. So make sure you keep an eye on those. So again, another similarity. So now let's take a look at a difference on the equipment itself. So if you think about dry suction, take a look that there's a dial here. This is super helpful and it makes it much easier to know what prescribed order the suction's at. So if you look at this one, it's at negative 20. Now that's gonna be the most common suction that you're gonna see. So you see here, here's the dial. Now, one other important thing to note, if it's connected to suction, see here in the E chamber, this has got a little orange bellow that's going to inflate where that little arrow is. So if the patient's connected to suction, you're gonna see the bellow around that little arrow or indicator mark. That means suction's working. Okay, one more thing on that. Let's say the patient does not have suction, it's just being drained to gravity, you will not see that bellow inflated. So just remember that. If it's sucking, the orange bellow is gonna be inflated. If it's not, no inflated bellow. So and here's where we differ from dry to wet. Don't forget about water and think about wet. So when we're talking about wet suction, we're gonna look at this chamber A here. So the height of the water is at negative 20, as you see on this dotted line. If you remember that negative 20 is a very common suction setting. So what controls the suction here? Well, it's actually the height of the water. Now, when this is set up to suction, don't let this confuse you, but you should see some gentle bubbling in the suction control chamber in suction, in, excuse me, in column A here. That's normal when suction's applied. Now, these are the main components that you're gonna see in regards to these chest tubes. One more thing also before you go, and it's the same on each side. These chambers are really nice because it, it makes it really easy to see the label for the patient. Now, when you're connecting it, which part goes to the patient, which part goes to suction? Well, don't worry, the equipment's gonna tell you. So if you look up here, you see a little mark that says to suction. It's the same thing here with the dry. You also see suction. So this too, there's gonna be a tubing connected here. Also here, that's gonna go to the wall for the suction. Now the other piece where you see here, also on this side here, that's gonna be the one that's connected to the patient and the chest tube inserted in the patient's thoracic cavity. Thanks for watching.